Hey there. Happy Wednesday. So I'm not the biggest like tech guy or camera nerd. Like I'm, I'm not into specs. I don't really care what I'm shooting on. It's more of just a tool to get the job done. But I do really enjoy when something comes out that I think can simplify my workflow or just kind of idiot perfect because I'm not the I'm not the smartest guy in the world. So anything that can make it harder for me to make something look like dog shit, I'm all for. Which brings me to what we're talking about today. Resolve recently released an update where they added a couple new features of the color page, which I think are, are pretty cool. Uh, it's like this color slicing tab. And then they added a film look builder. Now, I think this is super cool and I think it may simplify my workflow and kind of make it easier maybe to, to get film looks if you're not a colors and you don't really know what the hell you're doing, which I fall into that category. So I'm super interested to kind of try this out and kind of see how it compares to other things like uh, using plugins like Dehancer and Scatter to kind of get those uh, looks that I, I like to, to achieve. So I kind of compared these two, I'm gonna grade the same image twice, once with using Resolve's native built-in features and once using my plugins. Alrighty, so this is the image here that we're gonna be grading. Uh, it's a shot from a commercial that I worked on like two or three months back. And so I think what we're going to do is we're going to start with Resolve's kind of native version first now. So I've already got my image here in a Rec. 709 kind of, uh, kind of space. And the first thing I'm going to do is this is already pretty balanced. So there's not really much I need to, to do here, I don't think. Uh, so I'm going to go right into to kind of building my, my look. Um, so let's find this new film looks thing. Film, film look creator. All right. Easy enough to find. Throw that on there. All right, right out the gate. This is what, 65 millimeter it says? That's, that's pretty nice right out the gate. I will give a point to, to resolve here right out the gate for not making it look absolutely fucking insane when you turn on the plugin. Um, that's one of my biggest gripes with the enhancer is just how insane it looks. This is, this is a nice look. Let's look what else we have here. We have 35 mil. Ooh, I like that one more. We have cinematic, which I guess gives you bars because you know obviously that makes your footage more cinematic um you have bleach bypass which ooh, that's nice i do like that um nostalgic cool like a little little super 80 um default no effects so does that do nothing oh no that that's oh it just gives you the look without like i guess bloom and grain inhalation and stuff that's cool um and then you have custom so out of the gate uh, the fact that you can just go from like your Rec. 709 image to the, just go from your Rec. 709 image to this with one click is pretty cool. Um, I think I'm gonna stick with the 35 millimeter here and then we're gonna customize it down here. Um, oh, this is cool too. So uh, kind of how I was talking in a couple of videos ago about how I uh, built like built like a film LUT for monitoring on set. Um, this right here, this if you click this button, it takes off all the effects that would not be compatible for if you were exporting this as a LUT for your monitor. So that is super helpful. Um, I do like that. Uh, but anyways, so let's go in and kind of look through here what we have. So exposure, I'm happy with where this is sitting. Contrast, again, pretty happy with where this is sitting. Uh, highlights, mm. no, I'm happy with how it's sitting. Fade, I'm assuming this is gonna bring out my blacks. Yeah, and I don't want that because as you can see down here in our waveform, our blacks are sitting pretty pretty high. Our white balance, um, yeah, I like where that was sitting. 65, that's nice. Tint, what is this gonna do? Okay, just give us a little bit of a, a little bit of green or magenta there. We don't need that. Skin bias, what is this? Oh, this is cool. So this looks like it's like you're able to adjust your skin tones without actually having to like either select them with a qualifier or try to just balance them out with your offset wheel. So this is super cool. I think my skin tone's pretty good. Maybe I'll bump it with a little bit more red there. Um, ooh, this is super cool. So subtractive saturation. Um, normally to do this without um, kind of this plugin before, you have to add a new node, uh, put it into the HSV color space, turn off channels one and three, which is, um, all the channels other than saturation, and then you're able to add subtractive saturation through that. Um, now, apparently, you can just do it through a slider, so that's super cool. And uh, the reason subtractive saturation differs from normal saturation or additive saturation is it's pulling the colors down as you're adding saturation rather than when you're just using normal saturation and it's kind of adding to it. I don't, again, I'm not super technical, but I can show you how it, how it kind of does it here. So like when we do this, as you can see, it's kind of, it's adding saturation, but it's pulling it down versus if I were to go here and add a serial node before, and then let's uh, 
can put that back to zero. And now we add saturation here. As you can see, it's just getting kind of like really, really bright versus In here, it kind of it brings it down a little bit, which that's cool. Um, I'm not sure how that works compared to the HSV version, um, which I will you know, compare when I am grading the next next image. But um, that's cool. I do like that a lot that they've added that. Uh, okay, so we have our subtractive saturation. That's definitely way too much. So we're gonna bring that back. Probably put it somewhere around there. That feels pretty nice. Um, richness. What is this gonna do? Okay, cool. That's that's not bad. Add a little bit of that. Just kind of how it's to, to feels like it thickens up our, our color here, which I think this is similar to like our color density slider in um, Dehancer. So I do like that they have that. Um, and then bleach bypass. Oh, nice. So it just adds a little bit of a bleach bypass effect, which that's cool. I don't think it's right for this image, so I'm not going to do that. Um, then we have split tone here. With split tone, what you can do is it kind of just adds those kind of cool tones to your shadows and your warm tones to your highlights. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, obviously, I do like do split toning, but I don't think I would use it as like a slider form. I would rather do it myself. Um, but like, let's see if we crank this all the way up. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, but if we just add like a little bit of it, that's not bad. It gives us some. That's much better than I was expecting it to be just for a slider, so I, I will say that. Um, maybe bring it back a little bit. Let's see, what's that doing? Yeah, I don't I don't hate that. Um, let's see our pivot here, if we pivot it one way or the other. Nah, I don't like it. I think it's kind of... I think I, I would be able to do a better job with the wheels and to not, you know, mess up my blacks and my whites with doing this. So I don't think I'm going to use that, but that is cool that they have it. Um, vignette, just puts a vignette on the outside of it. I would probably do that with a uh, power window. But again, if you don't know what you're doing in color grading, this is super cool that it just kind of puts it on there for you. So we'll leave that on. Halation. Um, I don't see much halation on here, actually. Maybe it's like really in here. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so it's a little bit there. It's very subtle. So again, you know, I think this is maybe a little bit too subtle and dehances a little bit too much starting out. So maybe if there was somewhere in the middle, it'd be better. But this is this is a nice place to start out. So let's kind of add a little bit of this and see kind of where it can go to. All right, that's cool. It's a little bit much. Honestly, I think I like using just the already built-in halation tool. Uh, you know, in Resolve where you can just kind of search it and put it on there. But this is nice, again, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, having this just in here, you can enable it or turn it off just right here and not have to go look for it elsewhere. So that's cool. We'll leave that on. Um, it's not doing too much. Bloom, let's see what that's doing. Okay. I do like the little bit of bloom that we're getting here. Kind of add it maybe a little bit more. What's our radius doing? Yeah, I like that. I like what that's doing. Cool. Yeah, so we'll leave that. Our grain, um, I like 16 millimeter grain, and then I like to make it pretty small. A lot of the time when I'm doing kind of grain on uh, things that aren't supposed to be like filmish, like this was a, a commercial that was not at all supposed to look like it was shot on film. Um, I like to make the, I still like to have grain because I feel like it sharpens images better than adding actual sharpening. Like if you go into to here, where is it? Nope. Oh. If you go into here and you add sharpening, I feel like the grain, if you make it really fine and small, you're not really noticing it, but it does kind of help to add sharpness back to the image without making it feel like digital sharpness. Um, so that is cool that they have a little grain tab in here. Um, so we'll make it super small and kind of see what that's doing. Uh, I think that's, I don't like how chunky that feels. Maybe if we make it less soft. Okay, I like the less soft. I think that's probably cool. Um, yeah, I like kind of a harder, smaller grain. So let's make that even tinier. We're getting there. That's not bad, but I think it's too much. So we'll back it off. Yeah, something like that. Oh, this is cool. I was wondering why it's a little bit soft. So you can kind of, the Dehancer has this as well, where basically it kind of defocuses or like, like uh, makes your image less sharp because I guess that's like 
maybe how it would look on film. I don't know. I just shot film for the first time like two weeks ago, and I haven't gotten the the uh, what is it called the the scans back yet. So I have no idea what it actually looks like. But um, I'm gonna guess maybe film is a little bit softer. So, uh, but I don't want that much of it. So we'll maybe turn it to there. Yeah, I like what that's doing. Um, and then we have some other stuff down here like flicker, which I think will just make it like kind of pulse as I'm going through here. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll just turn that off. And then gate weave. I don't know what that is. We're going to turn that off. And then film gate. What does this do? Oh, this just adds a little little border around it. That's kind of cool. Um, again, I don't think I really need that for this project, but it's cool to know that it's there. Um, yeah, and it looks like you got kind of all of them here. So that's cool. Um, yeah, I don't think we really need it for this project, but that is that is nice to know that it's it's there. All right, cool. So this was literally one node just using the film look creator, and we went from our Rec 709 to that, which I think is pretty cool, um, especially you know doing that literally in one node with just one kind of uh, little little effect there. Um, yeah, this is this looks really nice. Um, I'm very pleased with this. There's a lot more that I would do to this if I was actually grading it, but because we're just specifically looking at this plugin today and kind of where you can get if you don't know what you're doing and you know you're just starting out, I I'm this is where I'm going to leave this for today. Um, super cool. Oh no, I'm not. There is one other thing I'm going to do. Um, the color splitter thing, uh, color slice. So this is something that you can you before would have to do in a, a DCTL. Um, but now I guess you can do this in Resolve. So that's super cool. Um, basically, the reason I would use these is like if I want to thicken up a certain color like the reds, you can come down here and drag this up. I'm guessing this is going to break our image pretty fast. Yeah, like as you can see, it's like kind of making our skin tone a little bit like blocky down here and a little bit up there. Um, so definitely going to want to be light with this. So let's bring this like maybe 0.04. And I should probably be doing this in a different node actually. Again, I'm not a colorist, so I do things a little lazy sometimes. Sometimes I don't separate all my nodes out, sorry. <laughs> um, so we'll add a 0.4 here of this and see kind of what that does. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so as you can see, that really thickens up the reds here, which is what I really like. I like those kind of deep reds. So this is super cool to be able to have that again, kind of just built into Resolve. Um, maybe we'll do a little bit of yellow too. Just add like a little bit of thickness to that. Yeah, I like what that does. Um, anything else? Maybe greens. We'll mess around with these. No, not doing too much. Um, what about our blues? Maybe we pump up these blues a little bit. That's kind of nice. And again, the look we're kind of going for here is kind of uh, very commercial, very soft, bright, because um, that's what this commercial, the look, actually was. Um, so yeah, this is this is pretty cool. Again, with literally just two nodes and two built-in features with very small changes, you go from this to this. Pretty cool. Um, now let's look at how I would normally grade this with my plugins. So first thing we're going to do here is throw on our dehancer. Bang, and as you can see, like I was saying, it looks fucking crazy. <laughs> I don't know why they, you know, and also let me let me give them the benefit of the doubt here because I am in wide gamut. So this makes it slightly less crazy, but still, like that's a that's a very uh, intense starting place. So when I first downloaded this plugin and I, I put this on here, I was like, whoa, I must have done something wrong because this looks horrible. But you just have to kind of keep digging around and turning stuff off and on, and then you'll you'll get it to a place where it doesn't look like this. But so let's. Let's do that now. Um, I'm going to turn off our actual film stock from uh, this plugin. So the thing that I really do like about this plugin is there are so many options and you can really fine tune every little thing, um, which, you know, you can't do as much with the built-in resolve one. But I think that is nice for people who don't really know what they're doing because, again, it does kind of idiot-proof it, which, again, like I said, I like things being idiot-proof because I'm not the smartest person. So it is nice to have things idiot-proof, but... As you start learning more, like having all these different features that you can really kind of fine tune to your liking is super cool. Um, so we're going to turn off our film stock here and we're just going to use a film print. So let's see which ones we have here. All right, got the little Fuge. 
Uh, I think we're going to go Fuji here with this one. Yeah, so I like that print. Um, I'm going to turn off the grain here for a second. It's a little distracting. So it's looking a little bit bright. So what we can do is we can come up here to our print and our exposure EV and just kind of bring this down a little bit, somewhere like there. Um, we're getting kind of dangerously close to clipping some of our shadows here. So in a serial note right before there, I'm just going to come in here and add a little uh, neither, what's that? add a little point there and just lift this up ever so slightly. Nice. All right. Yeah, sweet. And I'm going to come back here. All right, so with just our print on, this is kind of what we're looking at. We were here, and now we're here. Very nice. I'm happy with where that's kind of looking. Um, so let's start planning out some of the other effects we can do in here. Uh, film compression is pretty cool. When you add this on, it kind of clamps down your highlights a little bit. So if you do have some stuff that maybe was kind of clipping, you can use this to kind of bring those back down and kind of it kind of almost feels like it's expanding your dynamic range a little bit. For this, I feel like it's maybe taking them down too far. So maybe back that off just a little bit. Um, yeah, I like something like that. I think that's nice. Um, then we also have in our... Um, print section, like I was talking about before, where they had the, what was it called? The uh, the richness, same kind of thing. We have our color density. Um, so we're gonna up that a little bit. You gotta be careful with this again, because this can break your image. Um, where did it go? There we go. So let's kind of bring up our color density here a little bit. That's nice, I like that. I don't think it's breaking the image. And maybe it is a little bit, actually. It's getting a little blocky in her cheek. Bring that back down a little bit. Yeah, something like that's not bad. Um, next thing we're gonna look at is adding our film grain in here. Um, personally, I don't like Dehancer's film grain. I much prefer Resolve's built-in film grain um, and not the one that I used on the like Resolve uh, film emulator, like they're legitimate, like film grain, like setting you can use. I think I can get it to where I want it to be easier. Um, but just for the purpose of this video, let's see if I can get it to somewhere I'm happy. Uh, bring down the amount. And you do have a lot of options here with like, you know, how you can kind of customize your grain, which is cool. Um, film resolution. This is like the defocus thing. And the last thing I want it probably about like 95, maybe. Okay, well, apparently my only option is 100, so. Not bad. A little too much grain still, it feels like. Because I just wanted to kind of be there to, to sharpen the image a little bit. I think it's still a little aggressive, so we're just going to bring that down. Um, what if we took out chroma entirely? That's not bad. Again, it just it feels like a lot, and I don't love it. Um, but for the purposes of this... Uh, this video, I'm I'm not mad at it. Bring some of this green out of the shadows a little bit too. Yeah, all right, somewhere about there, I'm not mad at. That's pretty good. Again, I would do less of it if I used the resolve thing, but this is this is where I can get it to in here, so that's where we're gonna stay, and I don't feel like messing around with this anymore. Um, Halation, let's see what that's looking like. All right, yeah, so that definitely adds some some warmth to the image with our, our halation here. I don't love that, so I'm just going to turn that off. So this is what we're going to get with just using Dehancer. This is where we started. That's where we ended. Really nice. I like it. Um, I feel like we do have better color separation with Dehancer than we do with our um, Resolve version, but we'll compare them at the end. But that's just off the gate, kind of where I was peeking back and forth to look at settings. It seems like we're getting better color separation with our Dehancer plugin without having to actually move around the, the wheels or whatever to kind of get it there. Um, so the next plugin I'm going to use, uh, and the final plugin I'm going to use, is called Scatter. So Scatter is super cool. What it does is it allows you to use diffusion filters in post-production. So you don't have to shoot with a black satin, a glimmer glass, a pro mist. Um, you can do that all in post and it looks almost identical, which is super cool. Uh, sometimes I'll actually even still shoot with a diffusion filter on there. And then if I want kind of a more stylized look, I'll then use uh, you know another filter on top of it. So I like the Hollywood Black Magic a lot. So we're gonna look at that. Let's look at what a, a hole like a one looks like just right off the gate. All right, so this is with it. 
that's without it. So I think that's way too strong, but I do like how it's kind of helping to just kind of roll off our highlights and wrap it a little bit. So we're just gonna bring down our intensity of that. Yeah, and I like what that's doing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so putting them next to each other, I do really like both of them. I think that they're still kind of different looks, um, but I think they both look nice. I do think that the one from Resolve is a little bit of like, it feels like a wash of color over it where Dehancer kind of kept the colors a little bit more separate, um, which that's cool that it was able to do that in the plugin and I didn't really need to mess around with my wheels kind of balancing things. Um, Cause you know, it's obviously just kind of easier to be able to do something in one plugin, but Either way, I think both of these are really nice looks. And especially if you're someone who is just starting out color grading, this uh, new Resolve feature is phenomenal. Um, you know, if I could have gotten looks like this when I was first starting color grading, I would have been so thrilled. Because um, like I was saying earlier, you know, like that is the biggest hurdle that you kind of have to, to figure out is, you know, once you know how to kind of expose your footage and compose things, it's the color grading that really kind of holds you back. So if you're able to kind of get a look like this just by clicking a couple buttons, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm sure some people are going to be mad about it because it's like, oh, you know, it's not the, the art of color grading. And it's like, that's okay. You know, this isn't, I don't think, built for colorists. I don't think this is going to replace colorists. I think this is going to be a really good tool for people who are starting out and are trying to get, you know, a nicer look in the grade than they would be able to get themselves um, just by messing around with the, you know, the color wheels and trying to create film looks on their own. That's pretty much all I have for today. I think this is a great addition to Resolve. I'm super excited to kind of keep playing around with this and see, you know, maybe what other looks I can get with it. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think about this, what you thought of the plugin version versus the uh, native Resolve version, um, and kind of, you know, how do you color grade and get the looks that you like? Do you, do you use other plugins? I'd, I'd love to hear about it. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you. Uh, if it wasn't, sorry. Uh, maybe I just rambled this entire time and these looks look horrible. That's all very possible, but hopefully not, and hopefully we got something from this. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.